Thank you. I think we need to advise the journalists not to send the questions before we finalize reading the statement, because some of the questions are things that I've directly responded to. I've indicated that the president will address the nation when a special cabinet will be convened, when the different ministerial committees that and departments that are working on the on the various aspects of the of, of the of the work that needs to be done regarding spaza shops is already done. So I will not answer the question on. Uh, on whether Minister Mutsualedi, the NICD, has done the investigations and uh, what are the findings. I've already indicated the President will address the nation. The question of whether we've discussed the ongoing saga of Spaza Shop, <laughs> I've already responded to that and whether the President, yeah, so those I will not uh, respond to because those were substantively covered in the election. Why I said earlier that maybe we must ask what are the leadership development in SAFA? You'll recall there are rules that uh, um, FIFA have in terms of sporting bodies that they don't, we don't get involved in their affairs. So I do not know what are the developments that need cabinet. You, I think the matters that relate to SAFA, they must be asked to SAFA. At least we are, we, government is uh, accused of interfering and you know when we are accused of interfering it will mean SAFA then gets banned from participating in both CAF and FIFA and that will have severe imp impact on our sporting, in, in particular football community. So I would rather shift those issues unless the specific issue that relates to, that require, requires government in terms of that. But in terms of the rules of FIFA, we don't get involved at all. And. Uh, there was a question of whether we are not worried about the the, the pronouncement by President elect of the USA, President Trump, that they are going to strengthen their relationship with Israel and so forth. As I've indicated, we don't regulate the relationship between our trading partners and our demo, uh, diplomatic partners. We, we we are concerned with our own relationships and we service our own relationships. Who our trading partners and uh, the diplomatic partners relate to is none of our business. Our business is South Africa's relationship and national interests. So let's not obsess about who's elected president in a way. We must obsess of who's president in South Africa. That's what we need to obsess about because that's what determines our foreign policy approach and our, our standing in society. That's what we need to op uh, oppress, uh, uh, obsess about. Other countries, let's not obsess. But you must, uh, South Africans must always remember that the government of South Africa will always have the national interests of South Africans. Our priority in terms of foreign policy is South Africa, a better SADC, and a, a better Africa, and a better world. In that order. We start here, get to the region SADC, get to the continent Africa, and then to the rest of the world. That's how we approach things. And all that we do in the national interest of South Africa and our com uh, contribution to the common good and better humanity of the world. Because if the world is not in, in uh, uh, harmonious, there's no global peace, South Africa on its own cannot survive. Then there's a question around the, 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 Bila, the Bila Act protest. Let me start at this point that you have heard the Minister of Basic Education, uh, uh, Honorable Siviwe Gwarube, at the IMBIS on Friday in uh, Mkababa, Etequini, when she announced that the Department of Basic Education have started measures to prepare for the implementation of the Bill Act. That's the focus of Cabinet. The ones who march and hold uh, apartheid symbols, it's for South Africans to know what type of leaders they have that they were, you have leaders in various parties who continue to embrace apartheid and wish to reverse us back to apartheid. It's not a cabinet issue. Our issue is whether the Bila Act is going to be implemented or not. And the minister has come out in public. The other ones, will, the political parties, will use that in campaigning to remind South Africans that this one supports the apartheid flag and, the, and symbols, and therefore they want us to go back to that heinous period where South Africans were not equal, where the sketch of apartheid and racism was deemed a, 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 a violation of humanity. So that's for you to write about. 
But for us, it's the implementation of the Biller Act to redress the exclusion of people, of children within the schools within their own radius because of language. As a country, our policy is inclusivity and promotion of all indigenous languages. There's nothing stopping a school teaching in English to teach in Chivenda if the dominant children in that area uh, also Chivenda speaking, or provide dual uh, teaching. The Department of Basic Education during the sixth administration started to to pilot the, the teaching of its course of, 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 uh, of uh, classes higher than grade three in its course in the Eastern Cape. And that's the rollout we're expecting the Department of Basic Education to promote and to work and put resources in place that all languages can have access to their own, uh, 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 all languages can have the access to teaching and learning. But there will not be a protection of exclusive rights of others in public schools. Public schools must remain accessible to all within that vicinity. And there cannot be laws put by, uh, by school governing bodies that exclude other people to participate within the, within the radius that they are, they are in. I've reported around, we've reported around the Zamazamas and the, and, and the, and, and the Spaza shops, the question around, have we ever discussed the situation? We've reported about it in, in the statement, and that's why I'm saying, Colleagues, don't write questions before you hear us. Try to hear us first and then write the questions. That's why we have also structured the cabinet statement so that you can predict if issues that are coming from the environment, we then explain what government is doing on current affairs and contemporary issues, and then we get to the government, uh, to the cabinet decisions. So anything that relates to spaza shops, including whether there will be a call to ban, whatever, I'm leaving it to the president to address. And then there was an issue around the local government municipal coalition bill, whether it could be signed before the 2026 election. Before we talk about it being signed, we must talk about it being processed by parliament and finalized by parliament before then. So you need to ask, uh, um, the Sunday world will need, and yourselves will need to ask parliament whether they'll be able to process that bill and, and conclude it before that time. And also the question to the department of COCTA, whether that bill will be submitted to Parliament for processing before time. After the two houses, <coughs> excuse me, after the two houses have considered the bill, then we can ask, will it be signed before the 2026? So we're now putting the horse before the cut. And it will be really, it's really unfair to ask me what, what the formula looks like. I think we need to engage with the bill, uh, with, with, with engage with the proposal that's available in public. And, 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 and ask the Department of COCTA to say how that form, that, what is the interpretation. What we need to always remember is that the, how the, the representation of uh, public representatives, whether in local government, a provincial national government in South Africa is governed. There's a provision in the Constitution that requires representatives, uh, representativity, including the proportional representation requirements. It's a provision of, of, of the Constitution. I just forgot the clause. I was trying to, to recall what, uh, what clause it, it is that deals with that one. And then there was a question of whether we are going to send help underground to the Zamazamas, <laughs> South Africans. <laughs> you want us to send help to criminals? You want us to send help to criminals, honestly? We're not sending help to criminals. They're, we're going to smoke them out. They will come out. We're not sending help to criminals. Criminals are not to be helped. Criminals are to be persecuted. We didn't send them there. And they didn't go down there for the good benefit or good intentions of the Republic. So we can't help them. Those who want to help them, they must go and take the food down there. They will come out, will arrest them. You remember there were the other ones who, who burned in a methane gas explosion. You remember, was it last year? Yeah, last year, if not early this year, last year. And you said we must send people to, uh, the soldiers to retrieve them and expose them to methane gas. So you want us to send our, 
our law enforcement officer to risk because criminals went to destroy our country? What if when we send police or the military down there to supply them with food, the, pl the place explodes and caves in? What will happen? So families must continue to sacrifice because criminals got themselves in a bind and we must come. No, we're not sending any help. They will come out. Whether we're going to retrieve the bodies, it's not our job to retrieve bodies of criminals. When we asked whether families know if their children are involved in Zama Zamas, nobody came out and said they know. So if your child is missing because they are, they are dead in underground on illegal mining activities, you must come and tell us why didn't you come and report them that they are undertaking criminal activities. Our program is to smoke people out and close the whole the holdings. so that they cannot be illegal mining. That's our program. It's only in South Africa that you are told a criminal, a, a criminal does not have a comfortable bed in prison. I, I didn't expect that question. Anyway, thank you for the questions, unless there are other follow-up questions. Uh, I think Minister on the online question, uh, the follow-up questions responded uh, to them, but I see in the house uh, here in the region Cape Town, I have uh, two hands which I will then uh, uh, take. Let me make them recognize you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Can you hear me? Maybe you can use the next But I can hear. Okay. Sure. Minister, you said earlier that um, Cabinet welcomed the submission to the ICJ of the documents um, that was given. You just go back. Memorial filing. Memorial filing. Thank yes. You so much. Does that include um, DA ministers in Cabinet and in particular the DA leader in Cabinet? Maybe you can also uh, introduce yourself. Alvis Mashaba is a Thank you. I'm just clarity, just short clarity on SABC bill. I mean, I heard your explanation on the process that must be followed before withdrawal. Are you saying Solima Lazi, the minister, did not follow this process? And if yes, he didn't, will this meeting and this matter be discussed at the next cabinet? Will he be wrapped over the knuckles in that cabinet meeting if he didn't follow this process? I think uh, in the in Bizo Center, I don't see any other hand. Uh, Minister, you can then proceed. Uh, the issue, um, I, I've got an explanation, the issue around the, the SAFA, it's about uh, the warrant of arrest. We don't, cabinet do not get involved in the prosecution of individuals. Uh, remember the investigation by the police and the prosecution by the prosecution authorities, it's independent and is done based on the merits of them. So we don't comment on any one person or the other. Whether it's a politician, whether it's a private individual, we don't get involved in those things. We don't discuss those things. It's not our space. And then the question around the billable, uh, it, it, Minister Malazi did not come to cabinet for that. So we'll assume he did not know the process. Uh, we do, in cabinet, we don't have a tendency of wrapping people up there. And also, ministers are not ministers of cabinet, uh, appointed by cabinet, they're appointed by the president. But ministers in cabinet, we engage and correct each other in terms of position. Rapping, uh, rapping over the knuckles is not our business. Our business is to say, this is how things get done. This is how we do. We support this move. We don't support this move. That's what we do. This includes the follow-up question on whether the ministers that must have indicated our obsession is with the implementation of the Bill Act. 
the other ones who participated with the apartheid symbols and carried the apartheid symbols is for you to write about and for South Africans to judge them. We've got local government elections. Let's ask South Africans whether they want leaders who embrace apartheid symbols. And there's a question around the memorial, whether they're DA ministers. There are no DA ministers in cabinet. There are no ANC ministers in cabinet. There are no PA ministers in cabinet. There are no IFP ministers in cabinet. There are ministers of cabinet under the government of national unity, which is called, which is the seventh administration. So cabinet welcomed the submission of the memorial to the ICG. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate your time. You will watch out for the updates should the president, uh, uh, when the president is going to address the nation, we'll keep you posted and uh, on, on that matter. Thank you very much.